Thank you, Lord. What a blessed day. Male da da ba sha da da kushin de la rosia. Le kapate terendo su taradosia. Ma sete le kushu balande. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. It's a blessed day. Male garo sha balande. Yes, Lord. Holy Spirit, we welcome you tonight. Do that which makes you God. Lord, we hand over everything to you. Take over, Father. La te barando shatalago sige. To plale san tororo sige reshe. Thank you, Jesus. La te barando sige raba. Ka te kamale ka paloto sige. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. La tu bade de he. Sugar and the Rodosia Mate Capatoto Rodosia. Thank you, Jeffet. You have been consistent. God bless you and your family. Thank you for connecting Evangelist Beniza from Calabar. God bless you. Oh, we serve a mighty God. What a beautiful day. What a please. I welcome you to a new week. My own deaconess. God bless you. Mercy. You are blessed beyond measure. Selene. Thank you for connecting. Peter. Jane. Please remember to share. 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 Uche Chuku Prince, thank you for connecting tonight. Lati Bale de Kesu Taradosia. So Male Kate Regedeje de Rosia. Lato Barado Seke. Yes, yes. Wow. The new mommy. Glory. Thank you for connecting tonight. Regards to baby. Keep my pepper soup from you. Love it. Thank you for connecting. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, take over tonight. Empower me. La ba da da sha da 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 kushi de de de. Kotu ba de kata la gosia. May this week return to you everything that was taken away. Chimde, thank you for connecting. La pato toro do shendere rosia. Come on, come on. Start a watch party. La rura gade zendere rosia. Our God is able. Our God is able. Lake, we are taking charge tonight. We are taking charge tonight. Ma se talaro shitele boze. La le barando roro shoro rosia. You may need to invite somebody, call somebody to come up. La puta le resendoro rosia. Le kuta la rabo suta la rabo shindere dia. La pate ke tuloro sintele dosa. Ma se te kuta la rabo rosia. Fale katu bado se tele dosia. Maya la le katu pate le kushita. Worship him. Uche Allah, thank you for connecting tonight. I'm in body pride. You're whole. There's healing on your body tonight. Maya la katu sabrodoshe. Sekuta tele do sinda. Le fata katu do sehe. Maya la katu do sehe. Yes, 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 yes. Jesus, Jesus, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Le kutala baroda shuta la deze, makatu tatele rose. Arise, thank you, Jizak, my man. God bless you. God's way from a worry. Thank you for connecting tonight. La.
Tarandoze Gashi Katabadez Selaraba Shararoje Yes Lord, yes Lord Something is already happening Holy Spirit carry me, carry me, carry me Lipate Kurando Sutala OC, thank you for connecting My Queen, thank you for connecting Good to see you aboard. 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 Come on, come on. Worship him for today. He here. Thank you for connecting. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Pelebo Shadara Bushara Dose. Katula Kushu Katala Dose. Le Katula La Baraba. Malo Katuba Tosuta. I have every reason to give him praise. Forget about the disappointments. You have a reason to give him praise. La Patotorondos here. Yes, Lord. Worship him. Give him praise. Mighty God. Kolada Katute Lebosi. Invite somebody right now. The platform is set. The platform is set. Lika pato toro dosi. Siga tantele dosi. Thank you, Jesus. Peace. Thank you for connecting tonight. Onyeka, my man. Can I? Can I see you just? Bless the name of the Lord where you are. Forget the challenges. Just give him praise. You can shift the center table and just give the Lord a dance. It's just you and God. You're right at the altar. Thank you, precious, from Austria. You have been consistent. God bless you. Here, Hele Kambarado Shereba. Oh yes, Ricardo, you are blessed beyond measure. This week will make you smile. No matter the lockdown, your heavens are never locked down. Worship this God with me. That devil is a liar. We are going somewhere. We are going somewhere. Forget about those against you. They that are with you are more than they that are against you. Jesus, thank you for connecting. Help is on the way for somebody. Those bills will not bring you down. They will all be paid. Relax. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Ozzy, thank you for connecting. Joe, Joe, you forgot me. Oh, good to see you, Chimo. Thank you for connecting. The machismo is in the house. Wow, Udo Joseph, Chairman, Amloya. 
What a night. What a night. What a night. Invite people. Invite your friends. Start your watch party. Something is going on here. With joy shall you draw salvation. Thank you, Odochi. Thank you, Promise. You can't take away my joy. Not for where. I hear you. The white man. Charles. Akim, thank you for connecting tonight. Your joy is back. Your joy is back. You are joy. Forget that devil. They can't take your joy. They can't take your joy. Malika Batu Talano Shetema. Oh, yes. Give him that dance. Give him that dance. Embarrass somebody around you. Aha. Uh -huh. Aha. Uh -huh. Glory. Man of God from Kaduna, Ibrahim. Father, we give you praise. Lord, we give you praise. Hallelujah. 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 Let's get into our meetings tonight. Let's start with tonight. We are looking at the activities that make an altar. There are certain things that must take place at the altar for it to become. An altar that is alive. Apostle Omauda, God bless you. You are very fireful today. God bless you. Lawrence from Germany, God bless you. Malika Botarata Shatele. A sleeping man will have a sleeping altar. The altar is not for men that sleep. That's why while you're sleeping, people are on a journey to their altars. I need you to understand that the altar. Is a place of activity. There are things that must be happening. The altar is a place of for activity. The altar is not a place for lazy men. The altar is not a place for idle men. The altar is not a place for frustrated men. Listen to me. It is a place where you must be alive, standing on your feet to take charge of matters. Remember, the world is a battleground. The world is not a playground. The world is not for tired people. If you are tired, you will be wasted. The world is for those who are able to stand. And David said, Blessed be the Lord who teacheth my hands to make war and my fingers to do battle. You can't become casualty when you are still alive. No, that cannot happen. Can I go for that to tell you that it takes one man to go to a shrine, raise an altar, and mess up a whole family. If one man can do that, one man can raise an altar right from your church, right from your bedroom, and you will deliver everybody in your family. It's not written anywhere you will suffer what others suffered. No, 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 no. You're only suffering what others suffered because you're living the way others lived. The altar is a place of persistent consistent activity. I'm talking to somebody tonight. I'm going to share on five things 
that take place at the altar. We don't have all the time. You can get my message on Powered by the Altar. It's going to help you a lot. I'm working on subsequent editions to expose. And by the grace of God, the message we have been on this since last week. And this week, we will still continue with altars. Tonight, we are going to be dealing with the activities of the altars. Those are the activities that help you to take charge of your life. Take charge of your destiny. Take charge of your glory. I believe no man will mess you up after tonight again. Mali Kabosha, Pastor Kotsfini from Asaba. I'm very loyal, sir. You forgot me, but thank God for, for Corona. <laughs> You're laughing. God bless you, sir, for connecting. The presence of these men is the presence of grace. When you have a priest, listen to me, a, pa a native doctor, an oracle, does not come to your house for a family meeting. He doesn't come for negotiation. He comes to set things in order. Remember I told you, you alter things from the altar. It is meant to alter things. And tonight, every negative thing about your life, your family, heaven will alter it in the name of Jesus. For your good. Every plan of the devil against your family, against your business, against your health, they are altered as I'm talking to you now. Let me hear somebody blast amen. There are things that must take place at the altar. The altar is a place of persistent, consistent activity. I want to take note of this. Somebody hear me and take note of this. If possible, someone who is gifted, there are people gifted with writing. As I make some of these points, type them in. It will help some people to grab it and it will sink. No matter, even if it appears five times, let it come. It's emphasis. This is what church is all about. We need to drive it in. Some people will miss it while I'm saying it. Somebody will grab it when it is written. I want to say that the altar is not a place you stroll into. It is a place you dedicate time. You dedicate time. It is not like people who want to do quiet time and they rush into the toilet while they are easing themselves. They are reading their devotional and they are combining. That is nonsense. I want to tell someone, if you don't have time for the altar, forget about it. The one that has time for the altar will take over your portion. It's not a place you are in a hurry. Let me catch up. No, 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 no. God is not a man. God, even you go in and wait on your boss. How much more God? You must create time. Tomorrow, I'm going to be talking about facts about the altar. Truths about the altar. Things that you must know that can help you to establish your altar and it will be effective. When you have the right altar, listen to me, not all prophecies. You don't need a lot of prophecies to move on. You can screen. There are people, yes, yeah, I believe in prophecies. No, take note of that. There are men here, I believe in their prophetic gifts. It's a gift and we cannot because of our Dibolo jazz and we say there are no authentic ones. There are. But your altar will help you to see. Your altar will direct you to the right one. Your altar will make you shift when the person that is doing it is the wrong person. It will help you to understand that what this person is doing or saying is not in line with the word of God. And so you must have time. You must have time. You don't stroll and stroll, stroll in and stroll out. Now tonight, let's rush with these lessons tonight. Number one, at the altar. If you have set up your altar, there's a first activity that almost be at your altar. That is, the altar is a place of consistent, persistent worship. 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 Psalm 99 verse 5. I will not load you with scriptures, but I leave you to go and make your studies and make your researches. Psalm 99 verse 5. Thank you, Dr. Bosa Ejindo. Thank you, sir. You have, you have been an encouragement. 
great encouragement to this broadcast. God bless you, sir. Look at Psalm 99 verse 5. We need to move on very quickly. We need to move on very quickly. Lato barando shadado sehe. Ketu lakatu lebo sundorodo. Lakata lakatu rado sende. Lakata lago shubarada bosia. Leku tarabasu toro gochite. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And it says, yes. Exalt ye the Lord our God and worship at his footstool for he is holy. Worship at his footstool for he is holy. There is one constant thing that must be at your, at your altar that is worship. That is the knocking you do on the door of God. Worship is not singing song in slow motion. No. Worship is recognizing God for who he is. Reminding God the things he has done and who he is. Worship is coming to a point where you bring yourself down so that God is exalted above everything you're going through. Above everything you're going through. Look at New Living Translation. Chizak, thank you. Exalt the Lord our God. Bow low before his feet. For he is holy. Bow low before his feet. For he is holy. I know that God demands and deserves our worship. Whether you have paid rent or not, worship him at your altar. Whether the people that are owing you are calling police for you, go ahead and worship him. I need you to understand that God is interested in people reminding him of who he is. And that's why I will encourage somebody tonight you need to make adjustments in the kind of music that plays in your house. You need to make adjustments in the kind of movies that are watched in your house. Remember, your altar is within your house. You can't desecrate it with stupid music. I'm talking to somebody tonight. It is time to screen your music rack. It is time to screen the kind of CDs that you have, especially when you have your children around. The average child of a Muslim will cram the Quran before he's seven years. Before he's seven years old. The average child of a born-again Christian has the latest music that is full of nonsense out there. Nothing to honor God. Nothing to respect God. Thank you, Comfort, for connecting tonight. It is important that you join us in the spirit of what we are doing now. I want somebody to understand tonight that God is interested in the kind of things that ooze out from that altar. You can't raise an altar by the side and some other place you are, you are playing one kind of thing I don't understand. Worship songs that are made for deities of the village. Worship songs that are made for marine spirits. You hear some songs and they tell you our music is from the water. You hear some songs, they are dedicating it to the water. And you are playing it right where your altar is. Can you, can you understand that? If you were God, what will you do? The altar is a place of worship. Thank you, Apostle David Onoha. Happy birthday to you. I celebrate the oil on your head. I celebrate the work you're doing. The Lord will keep you for us. I want to encourage somebody tonight. It's important. Start a watch party. Invite people. I'm rushing through this. The altar is a place of worship. There must be consistent, persistent worship. You come in there, you can sleep with it, wake up, the thing is still playing. On your bed at your altar, you are blessing him. You remind him of who he is. You remind him of what he has done. The, no native doctor does anything until he has given worship to his deities. 
If you watch the movies, you will know that. And that's why even if you go to the bar beach, you will see them. They will always do it, take their bell, tie their red thing around their waist, and then they begin to wash it. By the time we went to Cherubim and Seraphim to go and minister, uh, um, um, Apostle David Onoha has also gone for, for, for uh, a program in uh, Cherubim and Seraphim. That's what we do. The only thing is that you refuse to wear their white. Me, I wore their white. Then you see the do do <laughs> Oh my God! Listen to me tonight. God wants to hear us tell Him who He is. God wants to see us. Forget about the problem. When you worship, you are telling Him the problem is not important. I know you're bigger than it. That's what it means. Um, I can spend one hour, two hours. On each of these things, but tonight, because we have so much to cover on altars, I need you to understand. Somebody is asking me for the scripts, but I said, Go ahead and let's go flow through this thing. It will bless you, it will help you to help somebody out there. Number two, the altar is a place of inquiry and revelation. Inquiry and revelation. Inquire, thank you, Ma, for your watch party. I can see. People are connecting through you. I want somebody to understand tonight that God is interested in revealing himself. Numbers 22 verse 41. Quickly. Numbers 22 verse 41. Balak hired a, hired a prophet, Balaam. And he said, you need to see some people so that you can cause them properly. You need to see some people so you can cause them properly. Numbers 22, verse 41. It's important that you read this. The second one will be Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. Let's flow quickly. Let's flow quickly. I'm waiting for the scriptures. Where you are, I'm sure you must have strolled to it right now. Numbers 22, verse 41. And it came to pass on the morrow that Balak took Balaam. Yes, Thank you, Chisim Chere. And brought him unto the high places of Baal, that he might see the utmost part of the people. He might see. He might see. I want you to curse these people. But he said, I can't curse them when I can't see them. And he said, take me to the altar. Let's get there. From there, we can see. That's why within this week, I'm going to teach you about tokens, on the altar, the instruments, the things that are used at the altar, so that you can properly take charge of your life. The next morning, Bella took them up to the Bamoth Baal. From there, he could see some of the people of Israel spread out below him. He was not there, but he had to go to where he can see. The altar is a place of sight. And that is why a lot of people have been deceived by so-called seers. Ephesians 1.17. Ephesians 1.17, please. Not 22, 1.17. Yes. And it says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Now, there's so much to talk about this. But I need you to know that the, if you can stay at the altar, God can show you. The reason why you run up and down looking for something to show you, somebody to show you, is because you can't spend time at your altar. God will manifest there and show you things. I can tell you that. Some people need to understand how to know when God is speaking to them. Because how God speaks to you is not how God speaks to me. But God is still interested in showing you things about your life. We need to know God. Listen, forget about who killed your father. Forget about who killed your mother. Can you seek to know who Jesus is? The moment you get to know him, listen, what killed your father cannot kill you. 
in the knowledge of Jesus Christ is your identity, is your life. If you don't have it, you are deformed. What you don't know is bigger than you. I want you to spend your time. God can speak to you. You can write. Do you have a notebook? You don't even have one. When you study the Bible, do you write? You are only reading the Bible. You are not studying. Study is different from reading. Listen to me. I am on this thing every day. Someone. I am on this thing every day. And I have not repeated myself. Every day I'm having new things. It is a product of study. There are revelations. After studying the Bible, I lie down. Certain things will begin to flow to my head. I need to see Jesus and what he's doing. I don't need to see your grandmother. If God needs me to deal with your grandmother, he will show me. God does that. It's a place of revelation. You can't stay busy running after enemies when there is so much you don't know about yourself. The enemies are there. Some of them will die. Some of them are there on assignment so that you can know who God is. Without them, you won't go to church. Without them, you won't wake up and work hard. Without them, you will. So they need to be around you so that there can be fire on your altar. And so I need you to understand that it's a place where they monitor things. That's why when you come to the altars, you, there are altars, you have tokens, you have of water. Some of them you have mirror. Some of them you have a cauldron or you have a pot. Some of them you have a basket. Some of them you have a red cloth or a black cloth. Yeah. And they say, mention the name of the person you, are, you want to deal with. And the person will appear there. Listen to me. I said the person will appear there. I didn't say you will appear there. Because where you are is far beyond monitoring. You are hid in Christ and Christ in God. I stand on this altar tonight. Every platform used to monitor you, monitor your marriage, monitor your children. Fire consumes them as I'm talking now in the name of Jesus Christ. May the eyes that are watching to monitor your next step be blinded in the name of Jesus Christ. Take notes. They won't see the miracle coming. They won't see the help coming. By the time they know what is happening, you have gotten to your destination. God is moving somebody now as I'm talking right now. Somebody is about to connect to you and take you to the next level. They will not see it coming. They are waiting to see, but they will only see when you have arrived there. Let me hear something. Balaam said, I can't see them. Take me to the mountain where I can see them well. Then I can strike. I can strike. Listen to me. They can't see you again. For we are seated with Christ. Far above principalities and powers. Let them stay around you. Let them stay around your compound. They can't see you. They can only hear what has happened. And they won't know when it has happened. Something good is coming to someone. Something good is coming to someone. If they blocked it before, they cannot block it again. They are blinded as far as you're concerned in the name of Jesus Christ. But I'm more concerned about having the revelation of Jesus. Having the revelation of what his death has given to you. Having the revelation of what his blood has done for you, that no other blood can compete with his own blood. Having the revelation that when the blood of Jesus enters your mouth as communion, there is nothing that a witch can do. I keep telling people, if they suck blood, you drink blood. Which one is greater? You need to understand revelation. You can get that at the altar. Spend your time, read the scriptures. Read devotional, read books, write your own notes, create time. The altar, consistent, persistent study must take place at the altar. That's number two. Consistent. Today, oh, I don't know if I can finish this tonight because so much is coming. Let me take this one minute and speak to pastors. Please, this is not a time to sleep. 
This is not a time to just stay there and do things and just walk away. If you are not careful, listen, a lot of churches will lose their members. Immediately the lockdown is up because men are now looking for who to listen to. So don't be angry when you don't see certain people in church after the lockdown. You have not called them to pray with them. You have not called them to ask them how they are doing. You have not called them to identify with their needs. You have not called them to know what has happened around them. Listen to me today. You are losing out. You must have fresh messages after the lockdown. If not, you're empty. By the time the lockdown is out, a lot of people will be trying to catch their legs while some people are already on fire. Get back to your altar, sir. Sit down. You didn't have time before, before because of activities. I always tell people, when you want to kill a minister, give him a post in the church. You will keep running around post and administration and handling cases and your altar will be dry. Now that you are at home, please sit down and study. As I talk to you, I talk to myself. There must be messages unpreached that you can keep preaching for the next three months and you have not finished. Now you have the time. The altar is a place of inquiry and revelation. Any man, any woman that is doing family devotion for three minutes and then you pray with your children, you must be a joke. It's because your own altar. Listen, oh, thank you, Lord. I just had this in my spirit. You must have your altar as a person before you can preside over your family. You must have your altar as a person before you can pre pre um, um, preside over your family. This is for every man that is listening to me today. It's not a casual thing. You don't wake up and just get organized. You're rushing for work and you have left. You come back, the children have gone to bed. Especially for people that live around Lagos, Port Harcourt, and America. Europe. You've got no time. The work is more important. And I pray you will not raise children who do not know your God. I pray you don't raise children who do not know your God. Because your evening will be tampered with. Oh, this, is, this time is running so much. Each time I look at my time. Now, look at this. Let's, let's finish this. Number three. Number three. The altar is a place of covenant. Genesis 17 verse 7. Genesis 17 verse 7. Genesis 17 verse 7. Dr. Chomi, I've missed you so much. I know you have been so busy. Thank you for connecting tonight. The altar is a place of worship, number one. The altar is a place of inquiry and revelation. The altar is a place of covenant. Genesis 17 verse 7. I'm rushing so that we can round this thing up tonight and tomorrow we get over to the important factors of the altar. Male Radaba Shatala. I pray that you must come. You don't come to the acts to the altar by accident. Your altar must be a place where you have mapped out time for. Nothing compromises with your time with God. Nothing encroaches into your time with God. If you don't have time for your altar, you will become a victim to the one that has spent time at his altar. This is very important. I keep emphasizing it. It is not something you stroll in and stroll out. The altar is a place of covenant. Yes, thank you, Chizak. I will confirm my covenant with you and your descendants after you from generation to generation. This is the everlasting covenant. I will always be your God. Listen to this. I need someone to understand. I need, <laughs> tell me, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, mama. You know I love to listen to you. You are just a fire and grace on two legs. Now, tonight, covenants, covenants. Listen, a lot of people are suffering because of the covenants that their fathers have made. 
A lot of people are suffering because of somebody's covenant over your head. I want to say that after this broadcast, you will not be subject to the another man's covenant because another man's covenant can only rule you when you have not established your own. Go and read Ezekiel chapter 18. And my Bible tells me when a son grows up and decides not to walk in the idolatrous ways of his father, serving the gods of his father, it shall be counted to him as righteousness. He will not suffer for his father's sin. I stand tonight to declare every covenant following you from your father's house by the knowledge of Jesus Christ, by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That voice is silenced forever in the name of Jesus. I see someone here tonight listening to me. You will build the house that nobody was able to build in your house, in your family. You are going to do the travel that nobody was able to travel in your family. You are going to be able to achieve, come back with cars that nobody has been able to do in that family. Where they say nobody stays and enjoys marriage, let them watch out. You are coming to show them that there is somebody with a difference. I am talking to somebody tonight. I stand upon this altar to declare that God will enforce the covenant of Calvary over your life. Receive it tonight as I talk to you. I need you to understand that it is important that you know that your covenant can make your children what they ought to be. That's why every man must have a, an altar before you can preside over your family. You must have a place where you can come before God. Your children are not there. When you finish, you can come and transfer to your children. You don't treat God like a messenger. You are in a hurry. I will see you later. That is not God. If you don't give God time, get ready to give the devil time because he will hit you. If you don't give God time, get ready because the devil will really take that time from you. I pray that you get back and begin to think of giving God one hour every day. Very important. You can't be too busy. Now that you're in the lockdown, it's time to recharge your life. It's time to begin to build. You make covenants. That is why marriage cannot take place without covenants. Nothing that has to do with life that cannot. When a doctor is being initiated, he takes an oath. It is a covenant. When a governor is being sworn in, he takes an oath with the chief judge. It is a covenant. When a president is coming to take office, he takes an oath. It's a covenant. When a pharmacist is being inducted, he takes an oath. It's a covenant. When a judge, when a lawyer, wants to be called to the bar. He takes an oath. Listen to me. Covenants rule life. If you joined a man from the car and you followed and you started having children, I am sorry, you are not in marriage. You are... What, what will I call yourself? Exalted concubine. That's what you are. If the man makes a choice to go marry tomorrow, he will marry. Listen, as a believer, you don't do it without taking, making a covenant. That's why when you come to the altar, you are connected. I want to share with somebody tonight. Oh, God. I want to tell somebody tonight. At the altar, when the marriage is taking place, your covenant is not subject to your wife or your husband's behavior. I told my wife when we got married, I am not committed to you. She said, what do you mean? I said, I am committed to the covenant I have taken. Because when I was facing you and I said, with this ring, I did word. With all my worldly goods, I did endow. In the name of God, the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. When I said, I will love you and cherish you above every other. It was not conditional to your behavior. So when I made the covenant, I covenanted with your mess. So there is no excuse. Oh my God. This is heavy. I just hit somebody uppercut now. 
That is the truth. Stop making excuses. That error in your spouse is your assignment. My friend, fix it. Labano Shantalabos. Shagash, keeper of concubines. In the <laughs> ah, Choma has carried his PhD here now. I can tell you, covenants are powerful. The covenant you make can protect your children. The covenant you make can protect your grandchildren. He said, I will be their God. He made a covenant with Abraham and said, Isaac is not here. Jacob is not here. But wherever they are, I will be their defense. Don't leave houses. Don't leave bank accounts for your children. Covenant to back them up. You will kill them. Oh, God help me. Let's go to number four and number five. And we'll round up this meeting tonight. Number five, number four. The altar is a place of persistent, consistent sacrifice. Persistent, consistent sacrifice. Persistent, consistent sacrifice. Today, a lot of people are preaching. You don't give to church. You don't give to this. You don't give to that. You don't give to pastor. A lot of them making this noise. I have not seen them do things to help those needy. But listen to me today. It is a law. Let me tell you this. In spiritual warfare, sacrifice is a major weapon. In spiritual warfare, sacrifice is a major weapon. I can tell you that sacrifices will speak for your children and grandchildren. Sacrifices will hit. No man hits you. No man comes after you without a sacrifice on an altar. No man does that. Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice for us. Jesus gave you as a sacrifice. Pay the debts we do not pay. And listen to me. Every time you make sacrifice, you fall back to tell Jesus, I am committed to the work you have done. I am doing this not to buy it, but because I believe in what you have done. I leave myself at your mercy. That is what sacrifice means. At the altar, there is persistent, consistent giving. Look at what has happened. I have taken my time to look at things. Before the lockdown, people will go to midweek service. They are going to give their offering there. They will pay their tithe. Some of them will pay their transport and go for midweek service. On Sunday, you will pay your transport, go for church, give your tithe, give your offering, and then you get back. It costs you money. You are coming to give God. But let me ask, within this work lockdown, how much has transferred from your pocket to your church account? How much have you sent and said, this is, we are having church in my house and every day we keep the tithes and offerings. And we will send it to the church. I'm going to talk about a supervising altar. Because you must be accountable. Giving. Giving. I don't care what you think about it. I believe in what God has spoken. Sacrifice. Second Chronicles 7 verse 5. Very quickly, let's look at that. On the day that Solomon dedicated the altar, on the day that Solomon dedicated the temple, look at the kind of sacrifice he put on that altar. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 5. Bring it. I want to show you because we quote scriptures and we don't know where it's coming from. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 5. Somebody hit it there for me. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 5. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, something is going on here. Listen to me. Don't let the sacrifices of your enemies hit you before yours. Verse 5. And Solomon offered a sacrifice of 22,000 oxen. 22,000. I'm sure you know what it means. 22,000 cow. 120,000 sheep and dedicated all the people to the Lord. 
You don't raise an altar without sacrifices. 22,000 cows, 120,000 sheep. How long does it take you to kill such? The smoke went and smoked God out of heaven. That was what happened. And then when this smoke came to God, God came down in verse 13 and 14. It was that thing that made God come down. And he said, in this temple, anytime in this place you offer this sacrifice, Anytime I shut up the heavens, anytime the heaven is closed, and my people who are called by my name humble themselves and come to seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, repent of their sins. He said, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. My God. It was sacrifice that provoked it. It went before Solomon and we are still reaping from it till today. At times, I might shut up the heavens so that no rain falls or grasshoppers to devour your crops. These are the things that is happening. It came by the reason of sacrifice. Coronavirus will go by the reason of sacrifice. I can tell you. At this moment, Sacrifices do not come because you have plenty. I don't have all the time to do that. But listen to me. Don't eat your weapon. Don't break your weapon. Don't use your weapon for pleasure. If it cannot solve your problem, make it a sacrifice. This is the season. Sacrifices are not made in abundance. They are made in scarcity. Go and ask Abraham. Abraham's blessings are mine. Find out what provoked that blessing. I was reading it today. I preached from it today to my house. Oh my God. Thank you, peace. Nothing can change my mind about sacrifice. This is important tonight. No man will tell you what to give. It's between you and God. I don't believe in you. Go, uh, go and bring 100,000. That is manipulation. They don't know whether you have it or not. That is deception. You hear from God. He tells you, and God takes the best from what you have. No man tells you what to give. They don't know what you have. It is God that places demand on the best at your disposal. Listen to me tonight. It is time to take charge. Get back to your altar. Release it. Shoot that arrow. I want to stand. I can't get to a shrine and destroy it. I can't face occultic men and challenge them if I don't put sacrifices on my altar. If I tell you the things I do, it's not a place to come and begin to make mouth. Men of God everywhere, anyone who is effective by God makes these sacrifices. But I tell you, a lot of these prophets and a lot of these manipulators that are here and there, ask them, when last did you give? They have been busy collecting. I want to tell somebody, even a native doctor goes to somewhere to make sacrifice to collect his child. There is no way about it. I didn't say you should go and sell your husband's car. No. Except God leads you by the approval of your husband. You must discuss it. I can tell you that. We waited 19 years looking for children. At a point they told us to do IVF. It cost us 900000 to do IVF nine, ten years ago. And then it didn't work. The next year they said, try it again. Try it again. And this time it was 1.2 million. I said, no. Because the doctor said, we will do our part. The rest belongs to God. I said, God, then why did you put your hand there first? I raised the amount and sent it to a man of God. I said, this is a sacrifice. I told my wife, no more prayers about children. It is a settled matter. Here we are today. Triplets, two boys and a girl without IVF. They just did their two years yesterday, day before yesterday. You need to encounter them. Before two years ago, they... They, they do all manner of things. You, you will be shocked. One of them will come to the parlor and sit down and say, I want to worship the Lord. He watches 
music channel. Nothing more. He will sit down there and he's just watching. I want to worship the Lord. If you're watching anything, get out of the system. Anointed children. Get back. Don't eat your weapon. Finally, I close with number five. The altar is a place of prayer. Colossians chapter 4. Colossians chapter 4. Verse 2. Give it to me. Colossians chapter 4. Verse 2. Have you ever gone round the road in the morning and the express you see sacrifices? Have you ever come out in front and you see blood at the gate? Have you ever come around and you see dead chicken lying somewhere around you? These things are real. But thank God for the blood of Calvary. The blood of chicken can't touch me when the blood of the only Son of God is on my head. No, 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 no. There's what you call spiritual immunity. For when I see the blood, I will pass over. Listen to me. Obey God. Your argument has led you nowhere. Your procrastination has led you nowhere. I will, I will, and things are getting, you are eating. He knows what you have. And when he says, give me, he demands it at that time. The best is what it takes. Colossians chapter 4 verse 2. Continue in prayer and watch in the same place of prayer with thanksgiving. Continue in prayer. I'm going to stop there tonight. Continue in prayer. Take time to pray. To teach you to pray? No. Begin to pray. Make five minutes. Drink a lot of water. It will make you urinate several times before daybreak. Every time you wake up to urinate, make it a point of prayer. Five, ten minutes, you lie down again. It becomes a part of you. Pray. 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 Tomorrow, I'm going to spend more time on the altar of prayer. Because you can't raise an altar without prayers. It is at the altar of prayer that you do your settlement. It is at the altar of prayer that you collect your entitlement. It's at the altar of prayer that you chain the people that are fighting you and make them useless. It is at the altar of prayer that you can get them confused. They will still be thinking of what to do. You have left them. It is at the altar of prayer that you establish the plan of God for your life. It is the altar of prayer that you get to know more about God. You can't read from any book. It is at the altar of prayer that God will reveal himself to you. Yes, Dr. Chami, pray, 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 and pray. Pray while taking your bath. Pray while dressing up. Pray while driving. Pray while waiting for someone. Pray while just taking a walk. Pray while you are doing your workout. Pray while you're cooking. Pray while you're doing your sanitation. Pray. Pray. And pray. Father, give us the spirit of prayer. Father, help us to pray. The fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. Consistent, persistent prayer. Teach us to pray. Make us to pray. We receive that oil tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Thank you tonight. Tomorrow, 9 p.m. Do your best to share. Share this after the broadcast. Somebody needs to listen. Thank you for every one of you that has been a part of this. Thank you for every man of God that has taken time to connect to us in this broadcast. Thank you to some of you, Uche especially, who sends money for us to get data for this broadcast consistently since we started. God recharge your life with good things. Thank you, every one of you that has been praying for me 
I need it. For by strength, no man shall prevail. You don't know the kind of attacks we get, especially since we got started this program. But God is on our side. We are not afraid of those things. That is what we were prepared for. The church is wired for crisis. That's what we came for. I need you to understand. God is on your side. Let there be fire on your altar. Take charge. Nothing will move you. My blessings rest upon your family, upon your life, upon your people. This week, you will have multiple testimonies. Whatever that has been delayed will locate you this week. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. And may the Lord give you peace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. Good night and God bless you. See you 9 a.m. 9 p.m. tomorrow. More grace. Raise the volume. Lato Barando Shatala was there.